Welcome to the Media Bubble Podcast. It's the podcast that talks about all geeky media related topic. I'm Frederick and he's Carol. Let's get this show on the road. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, a, a movie based on uh, a no- novel that kind of reminded us of Vampire Academy. And it's called Fallen. Yes, it's uh, it's actually even reminded me a lot of Twilight because it's it's like Vampire Academy mixed with Twilight. Yeah, after seeing it, uh, I I felt more Twilight. Yeah, even up to the like love triangle. L- like if if we're just going to describe on how we came up with this episode, we kind of just discovered this movie. That that kind of felt similar to our Vampire Academy episode, and we we thought. Hey, that was kind of a weird, fun episode. Do you want to do another? Yeah, I mean, it seemed apt, and I had fun seeing this movie as well. Yeah, but I, I, I gotta be honest. I, fe- I felt like th- I felt like when you described Vampire Academy, I felt like you described more crazy shit that happens. I, this film, I guess we will get into it, but I didn't really feel the same way. You, but, I mean, you're right. It wasn't as crazy, but there's also some weird stuff going on, which I really wanted to touch up on. Uh, to touch up on. Like, uh, but anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, if you did not know, Fallen is a 2016 teen movie. Uh, like, teen romance, a girl falls in love with an angel. They go to a school together, which is also like a mental health facility. Uh, and there's not there's not much more into it actually. I f- I feel like yeah, I'm surprised that it came out 2016 because at at that point I felt like that the this trend with the ro- romance la- romance no- novels turns into movies. I felt like that had kind of ended by then, but I guess not. Yeah, like. I guess they didn't get the memo with with the other movies that came out before them. <laughs> be, 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 before we 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 you start, Carol, can I just say say something that I just f- found funny? Be, yeah. Because when I started to watch this film, I I I I'm kind of sorry now in in the aftermath that we didn't watch it together. But anyway. Uh, oh my God! It would have been so much fun. Hmm. Uh, but but the the first scene that happens is that there's some kind of narrator expl- explaining this world to us, and I just found found it so so funny when when they said these line. The next heaven was light by glorious beings. It was perfect. It did not last. <laughs> I I I, I kind I kind of lost it at that mo- moment. Yes. <laughs> Okay, quick to the point, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this movie is full of these cheesy lines that I can't get out of my head. It it, But it's also so serious that it, it becomes comical as, mm. as you watch the movie. Um, so begin, but, Carol. I didn't even know there was a tagline saying that love never dies was to the Fallen movie. God damn it. Uh, okay, so, but we're, as I said, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So... Fallen. A girl goes to a mental health facility because she refuses to take her pills, uh, and uh, she meets a uh, she meets two angels. Uh, we have uh, Luce, who is our protagonist. She's a strong-willed seventeen-year-old living a seemingly ordinary life uh, until she is accused of the crime she didn't commit, um, and she just lands in this starkly white creepy almost like clinical school who that is also really fancy for some reason because they have fencing and like religious research which is what traumatized kids really need i need i suppose yeah uh, there, there, there's a lot of weird things like she, she the main character even says, says a line should we really be fencing with uh, a lot of former drug addicts and crazy kids yeah, exactly. And it's just like, yeah, you're right. Why is this happening? 
Also, there's a lot of mist everywhere. There's this mist situation that's getting out of control. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that the F2 too. <laughs> the, uh, like, there, there's just mist and the, uh, well, when you, you really start to notice the mist is where places where there shouldn't be mist. Yeah, I wanted to touch upon that later. Uh, but uh, Lucy uh, arrives at school and we are directly like introduced to one of the t- one of the two love interests. Uh, what was his name? Oh my god. Like it's just so badass. Uh, I don't know, but the Lucifer, the the bad boy. So she's st- she's standing in the entry hall and as she like yeah, here's your medal, here's your earrings, here's your phone. Like I think this is she just was a- called Cam. Uh, say say it again. Cam, I think he was called Cam. Yeah. So just like yeah, it's just a prison, and we get this shot of just police officers escorting Cam into the premises, like, and he has a mullet, and he is just like he has a carefree attitude. He's just like a, arriving to the scene like a rock star, and Lucy's and, and Lucy's just like. Yeah, I got it. I got. I gotta say that when you first see that, uh, you just kind of like, okay, he's the love interest. Yeah, but just this bad. I'm. I'm sorry. Just like this bad B behavior. Like, I applaud you. Like, what an entrance. I love it. Yeah, but it it is. It kind of was ridiculous as well. Just how we have a bad guy. How do we m- make it so to into the point that. Uh, oh, he's uh, a that bad boy. bad, yeah. Well, let's just have the police come in with him her first day at school. Yeah, and then he steals a lollipop and he just... And he pops it in his mouth and he, look back, and he looks back at the heroine and just like, oh my. <laughs> uh, and then she has just like a normal day in school. Um, she like meets uh, some of Normal, his... I wouldn't say, but okay. It's weird because people are like approaching her like, oh, you're a rebel. You are like a fire. You just want to break free, don't you? Um, and this is why I also picked up this picture because uh, Ken is sitting with Lucy and he's like doing this weird thing with his arm when he's going for like the nuts in the bag. Like this is such a weird pose and it's supposed to be like sexy. Yeah. <laughs> like he j- like I, I reacted to that too. Yeah, it's just like what the hell? Because like he always gets what he wants, and she's just like, "No, I'm not a rebel. I'm just misunderstood." Like, I can like I gotta say that people seem very interested in this, in this just quiet girl. Yeah, like okay, like she maybe burned, like she's maybe maybe an arsonist, but the whole school is like that. She's nothing special. Uh, but we learn that she is in fact special uh, because yeah, there, yeah, there is, is a effect why why they are so interested in her. Yeah, uh, but not before she her life is threatened uh, when a gorgle statue suddenly falls onto her, and she just stands there and looks at it as it's falling to her. Yeah. And then we have a scene where the main boy just rushes to her aid. And he gets her out of the danger, and then he looks deeply into her eyes as they're like looking at the derelict of the gargoyle on the floor, directly into each other's eyes. Oh my! Like this, th- like this couldn't be played like played more cheesy. It's played in slow mm. motion. They're <laughs> and also and like mo- most of the conversation is still just gasping. It's just. Yeah, there's long look into each other's eyes. Yeah, and then it's like or okay. actually that, or actually that just the whole movie when I think about it. Pretty much, like I think if we did make a supercut of the of the stairs, it'd be like half of the runtime at least. Mm. Um, and the special other boy is Trevor, wasn't it? Uh, Daniel. Yeah, so he's Daniel. He's the heartthrob of the whole school, and he has a girlfriend. But even then, he also saved this young damsel in distress from the gargoyle. Okay, uh, I, I got. I gotta be honest. It it is a little bit of an interesting thing that they in, 
är det in the movie they introduced uh, the when they introduced the two love interest they they took the main love interest the neck or the second i i mean in my opinion i was rooting for the bad boy anyway you are, you are always rooting for the bad boy for some reason yeah i have a type sue me <laughs> uh, i think i was rooting for the other guy even that he could be creepy at some times well i mean even like the whole point like because as we said, she's special, and supposedly, if she meets the boy, she'll die. And it's like... <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I, re I remember... Oh, wait, wait I, I should probably say this later. Uh, anyway. Uh, but I wanted to bring interesting uh, an interesting tidbit. So, as I'm watching this, uh, this movie, uh, I've uh, remembered, because I recently started watching Romantic Killer, that's on Netflix. Mm. Uh, and as Fallen is playing all of the tropes straight, just like just this new girl in school and everybody's into her and there's like flying statues and everybody's trying to save her and she's not a rebel, she's just misunderstood. These All of these situations is are just meant to be like, yeah, now you should kiss. And it's the exact same thing that happens in this in Romantic Killer. Uh, but Romantic Killer is self-aware enough where they just like where because it's just a story about hero heroin, people and there's this 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 spirit. I cannot really talk today. What is happening to me today? Uh, there is the, there is this spirit from a video game that says, "Yeah, I'm gonna take away all of your video games, all your sweets, your cat, and I'm gonna move your family overseas just so that you can have a romantic life." And you cannot say no to this. And okay. and the main heroine is like, "Yeah, I don't give a damn what you did to me." Uh-uh, I ain't gonna tolerate that. So she sabotages all the, like, cheesy romantic plot lines that the spirit is setting up for her because she knows that, yeah, she, she doesn't want, like, she she really wants to, like, be her own. Like, she, she she's not interested in romance. She just wants to play video games. Yeah, so this detour is because I kept thinking of this series while watching Fallen because it has the same cliches. The same, like, yeah, the boy, the girl meets the boy. But in case of Fallen... Uh, is, this a is this series um, new? It released last year. Okay. And it's very funny to watch, so you should give it a go. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I just, uh, before we go on with the rumors, uh, can I just uh, say some things that I... My, my kind of first impression with this movie. Yeah, go on. Uh, well, one of the first thing that I uh, the, that I I know <laughs> notice was I I sometimes I feel like the movie is just cut in a word weirdly way. I remember the first kind of scene when she walks walks into to the school and it, it, it's this quiet and then it just cu cuts to this teacher suddenly. Uh, explaining everything she probably already should have read in papers before she came into the school. Yeah, it was weird now that you mention it. Uh, and and then and then uh, the main character herself, I'm a bit if if I like or not because she 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 started to annoy me me at some points because I just feel like she talks in this. Quiet, quietly breathy way, way. Yeah, like, I, I noticed it too. It also drove me nuts. That like, it, it's, it's like, if it's like she's whispering everything she's saying, and it's like she, or she also takes a breed, breeder for every word, and I'm <laughs> not sure if she does it or not. But it's at some points it kind of just felt like it. She's gasping for air. The feelings inside her are coming forth. There, there's also a scene where she comes into the library and there, there's this boy that just drops a pen or something and she go, goes to, to, to give the pen back. And then he apparently fall, fell asleep in the library and she kind of just stares at, at him. And that's our introduction to our second love interest. 
Yeah, which is just her staring awkwardly at a sleeping man in the library. Hmm. I I gotta say that the fi- the I I noticed that the film has a uh, the filming location of this seems like some kind of real school in some way. It looks I fe- I felt like it looked cheap in in some scenes like, like in the classroom and things like that, but. Then there's some other scenes with in like the library or something like like that that I kind of felt oh maybe this film had some a little budget still. But then again, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves because in the upcoming scenes, uh, Lucy she goes to a party with one of the boys, and we see him dry up off. We see a transition into a party when they're for. Like a, maybe three minutes, three minutes shot of them going to a party, and then it's just cut back when she's driving back. So maybe they had access to this whole school, but they couldn't shot like shoot out of location. Yeah, that that could explain a lot of things actually. Uh, yeah, I th- I think they had access to this sort of school, and I guess they were kind of limited to that school. Yeah, probably that's where all the budget went. But talking about the school, there's just so so much weird things. Like I wanted to talk like in one of the scenes, Lucy, she goes to a pool. I specifically took this picture because uh, I I have two pictures in front of me. One of them is when Lucy meets uh, one of the boys at the pool. The other one is at a fencing club. And I just kept perpetually seeing him being wet for no reason. Oh, like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't actually think think of that. Do you want to wear know a weird thing about the actor who played it, Daniel? La, like f- five days ago, before I watched this film, I watched a film that was called Great Expectation, and he's the main character in that. So it was kind of just weird seeing him again. At was the, he so, al- so, so. was he also wet in that one? At some points, yeah, yes. I had a hunch. Uh, I think uh, I, we kind of skipped the slide because I messed up. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we've we been talking about some of the story and what was happening. And now I want to talk about something that was pointless and didn't pay off at all. Which is the side characters. Um, at the beginning of the movie, we've been introduced to like some some like students at school... Uh, namely these four. Uh, Molly is my favorite one, which I, I, I've made sure to point out. She's the best one. Uh, the other ones, they don't do anything. Like, they just have pat. Like, why do you introduce a, like, companions to your board, to the main characters? Like, they're supposed to be also angels. But they're not doing anything. Yeah. I, la, the, the, one, the blonde one of the group... Like I didn't even re- realize that she was part of the group before, before like like, uh, like before the end be- of the movie. <laughs> no, no, before before Lu- Lucy and her kind of best friend are, are starting to talk about the gr- group, and then sh- suddenly she mentions this blonde girl that always is around Daniel. Yeah. Oh, is she? <laughs> when when was she? When was she there? Yeah, I mean, uh, the blonde one, like, I don't even remember her name. She was so unimportant. But she was supposedly uh, Daniel's girlfriend, right? Not really, but it could be interpreted in that way, but I guess not. Because I felt like the following scene when they went to the pool, uh, Daniel said like, oh, well, I had this girl, but I don't have her anymore, right? So it implies that they were together. I I I think that was referred to the main character's past. Oh, okay. Then I misunderstood that case. But like we also have we have the blonde one. We have Roland. I think his name is the the guy with the dreads. He was in two scenes. He said that Lucy will like she will die, and then he was at the party where such awesome like such such lines were were rarely exp- like expressed what are you doing here because we are here for the drugs 
the vandalism, the depression. <laughs> yeah, L like like the, these all three of them are kind of in a in a gang together, and when you realize which sides they are on, you kind of are or and uh, actually you probably don't realize which sides they are on because. Well, they are, are uh, even thought they hang together, they uh, don't really follow the same true in some way. Yeah, like they, uh, but we even don't, we still don't know what they even do. What did they do? Tell me. Yeah, they're, they're extremely pointless. Like, uh, the, the first one we're kind of a little bit in, introduced to is the girl uh, Molly. highest up on this picture. Oh yeah, wait, that was uh, Ariane, I think her name is. Yeah, movie. she is the first one in introduced and you know how I said that I recognized the main character. I can I felt I ha I felt like I recognize her too and she apparently is a part of the Netflix series Shadows and Bones that I recently watched. So lots of great actors that were underutilized, you say? Well, she apparently is also going to be in the newest Dungeons and Dragons film. Oh shit! Let me look at her, look at her IMDb page. She ha she has really big eyes. I have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons movie, Honor Among Thieves. Yeah, I I, I ca her character here is uh, weird in many ways because. We are first introduced here to her and oh maybe she will be a friend to uh, to Lucy and but nope. then she's barely in any more scenes after that and when she are is in a scene she certainly talks oh I'm I'm worried about Lucy or, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well you're not spending time with her, so what is your deal? Also, I just want to talk about Molly again, the the bully, because she is, I mean, first of all, her drip, immaculate. I love her whole vibe. She's just a mean girl to the bone. She she probably, on her free time, she thinks what mean things say to Lucy because she has no hobbies or no interests. Like, this oh is my, her one thing. Oh my god, can you can you think of her uh, just sitting up at night in her room, just writing down, down. What, what mean things should I say? Does this sound good? Yeah, exactly. And when she like meets Lucy, she's like, "Yeah, this this is like her highlight of her day." <laughs> and the the funniest thing is, like, she was supposed to be this force. She was supposed to be this bully to Lucy, but halfway through the movie, she becomes irrelevant. Yeah, that that, that I re I reacted to that kind of too too that she kind of starts out as being. Oh, I'm this big bully. I'm going to make your life miserable. Yeah, like where she... are you in the second half? <laughs> <laughs> like she just like effed up doing what? Like she probably found another kid to like try her bad poetry on. Like, oh, you're a freak. I bet you like killed that guy. Nobody even likes you. Like, go off, queen. <laughs> uh, also, going back. Oh, another useless character, the therapist. Uh, yeah, he he was in two scenes when I think about it. He was literally in two scenes. He he didn't even appear on campus after that. Like the other characters that we joked uh, about about being in few scenes, you could still see them in the background. This therapy guy, he literally just was in two scenes. Yeah, and I don't know, like, what was the point? Was the point to see, like, oh, she's still not taking her pills? But like, like I, if I'm being honest, I, I have a hard time with the Luce, Lucy on this, uh, on uh, why she doesn't take the pills. Because he kind of expl explains it like, you see these weird visions, but if you take the pills, you have said that you don't have them anymore. You can live a normal life. Okay, with the, why, why doesn't she take them? Uh, and her answer is... Uh, well, I would, uh, I would, uh, what, what, what did she, she say? It was kind of like, yeah, that they make her well, feel well I would take a, I would take away a part of myself. 
Like I'm, I'm not really sure if this is the, like, like especially to today where people fe feel um, are are de depressed all the the, the time. I th I think that if there's something that could make you be you better, you should probably take that. Yeah, I mean, the, an argument could be made because there are a lot of people who don't like. I mean, they use the exact same reasoning when they don't want to take the pills, like that the pills take away their agency or they they're not feel the same that they feel aloof or goof or or, or weird yeah and i would uh, rather go to this uh, school which is <laughs> supposed to be full of um, full of full of weird people but the thing is it didn't pay off it was just background like oh she doesn't take care of her because she's like a reincarnation of her past life but it could also be easily said she doesn't take her pills because she's not like the other girls there, there's also a point where she, she says that ever since I came here, I, I, my visions have gotten a, gotten way wor worse. <laughs> then okay. take your pills. <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for taking, taking pills to to make you 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 be better. But if if it ca can help and doesn't have any bad eff effects, then maybe you should take it. Yeah, and also it just makes this whole movie so, so funny. I'm sorry to say it, but just like, yeah, all of this that is happening, she's just tripping throughout the whole movie. She she for, she just doesn't take her pills. Yeah, she has flashbacks uh, all, all the time. Uh, I'm just gonna let my cat out because she is very adamant about leaving me and not listening to our podcast uh carol's the cat segment that i some that i sometimes cut out and sometimes stay in yeah i like an active audience but she she was too active <laughs> oh uh, yeah and now we're going to talk about the mist i see yeah so <laughs> as we said there's mist everywhere there's mist outside there's mist during the day, during the night, during the party, and for some reason, there's also mist in the school pool. Yeah, it, it, I reacted to that kind of t too because if there is one place that that there shouldn't be mist, shouldn't there be? The, it probably would be in house. Yeah. <laughs> because I I looked around and it's like. Well, there's no really windows open or anything. It seemed pretty closed off. Exactly. Well, and it, so, I, so you can ask yourself, why is there mist here? It's it's so dumb because it's, it, I mean, for us viewers, we know because it's supposed to set the mood, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, it's just dangerous. What if, what if somebody is about to drown and you can't see the body because there's a mist in the pool? Like the, the the reality of the scene is is, is bec why is there mist here? Well, it's because the the main love interest is just going to suddenly appear out of the mist to to Lucy, and they are suddenly really close to each other without her noticing how close he he was. He just comes out of the shadows. Yeah, which is like okay, I get it. What you what you were trying to make. But it doesn't excuse the silliness. And also, the mist is later used because when they're done talking, when they're done, like, reminiscing, uh, he also just, like, vanishes. Like, he swims away and he vanishes in the mist. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, dumb. Okay, I take this back. This film is ridiculous. <laughs> and as you said, it's closed indoors. <laughs> and there's, like, what the fuck? Also, the whole conversation in the pool. I wrote, I wrote a like a uh, like a quote because he suddenly appears from uh, like they haven't spoken them that much. Uh, Daniel saved her from the falling gargoyle. They had like an intense sparring match, which ended up with Daniel atop of Lucy again. Like we get it, um, and then he arrives at the pool and they have this conversation. Where it's like, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, uh, and Lucy is like. This feeling, I just have it. This feeling that I know that I know you. And Deng is like, what are you talking about? Like, we don't know each other. And she's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> like... Yeah, she's really persistent. 
Yeah, but it's like, and they're breathing heavily, and it's like, you know, making it, it way more dramatic than it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, like, after this scene, it's the last, last time we see Molly, like, in the corner. <laughs> she just watches everyone from the top, and then she's not relevant again. Oh, uh, did you do you have a time point when the, this was the last time? <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's it's the it's, it's the frame. I think it's like it's like exactly the middle of the movie. Um, uh, after... well, is is that why you have made a, a Miss You Queen sign? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I wanted to see more of her. <laughs> like. As as I said, she was just so cheesy. I I I just wanted to see what what more what more would what would she be able to come up with? Mm. I I guess we kind of have to mention that throughout this film, Lucy Lucy meets an another geek who isn't really friends with anyone else, and she becomes friends with Lucy, and she is kind of the one that Lucy talks to all this crazy stuff that's happening to her. Uh, so she has actually a friend in the school. In the school that we just haven't mentioned. What was her name? Let, let me look it up. Um, pam, 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 pam. Her name was Pen. Mm. As I said, she was mainly used just for Lucy to have someone to talk about. I mean, to, not to not to. even that actually, because she, I mean, I quite liked her being friends with Penn, I almost rooted for uh, Lucy to just dump both of the boys and just hang out with Penn instead. Okay. Because, like, throughout this whole movie, like, at this point, we're approaching halfway through the movie, and uh, besides them, uh, besides uh, with Daniel having an awkward conversation in a pool and her being, like, beating in a, uh, like... With fencing and being saved by him, they haven't they haven't like vibed. They haven't spoken. They're just like sharing exchanged looks, right? And the other guy, Khan, uh, like they they haven't had a scene yet with the party. The only time she spoken to him was when she arrived. That she was not a rebel. She was misunderstood. And and like these are not relationships. These are just passing moments. But at least with Penn, she has like a actual relationship. Like they talk, they they figure out their problems. But you know, Carol, there, there is such tension between them. So between the boys and Lucy. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's undeniable. But let me dream, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, also. Uh, like it's ridiculous in so, some way. The few scenes that they have, they are just like, "Oh, should we kiss?" Yeah, it it feels almost like that. I feel like it would make for a much more interesting movie if they just if she just kissed one of the guys. Mm. Well, eventually she does. Yeah, uh, but I think you bring up an interesting thing because yeah, she's not alone. She has Pen and she has Pen's boy toy, uh, hacker boy. What was his Wasn't name? Wasn't his name Todd or something like that? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, Techno Boy Toy. I uh, don't remember his name of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I also wonder because, like, he he fulfills his role. Uh, we're we're jumping ahead, but but he's like Penn's love interest, right? And then he dies uh, as soon as he fulfilled his Techno Boy Toy purpose of exposing. Uh, that uh, Daniel is like an angel slash lives forever. Mm. Like he just dies, like yeah. that. If I guess he really wasn't that important, then. No, he wasn't, and a lot of the characters in this movie are treated this way. Uh, as the same with with Pen, like she because Pen introduced her boy toy to Lucy then she didn't have any scenes left until she, until she also died it's weird in some way because I'm not really sure what we spend all this time on because we are kind of just mention, mentioning that 
the, some characters are introduced and they don't really have a lot of scenes, then what are we spending all the t- time on when you think about it? Because we, as we said, we don't really spend a lot of time with the background characters. We don't really spend a lot of time with the love store story because they haven't had so many scenes together. What, what are we spending time on when I think about it? I don't know. Honestly, like, because, yeah, as you said, we, like, there's lustful glances and yearning. Yeah, we, but... we, have, we haven't even spent that much time on uh, the, the mystery that will unfold itself later on. Yeah, because if we it, have... If, we... Even thought it's kind of obvious what's going to happen. Like, like they, they literally have lessons about this specific event that... Oh, I'm wondering if the, the what the teacher is talking about, if that has any relevance to the plot. Yeah, I mean, the lessons are exposition, basically. Mm. But I also wanted to say, just like, agree with you, because there's still two mysteries in this movie, and we're approaching, like, we're far, like, we're past halfway point. Like, what happened with, what was the deal that, what was the event that sent Lucy to the school? And also, what's the deal with the boys? Right? Yeah. And they're also coy. And they don't want to tell her anything. And even when we learn about why she ended up in... Uh, like, in the school, we only had, like, one scene. Mm. Because the reason for why she ended up in the school was because... She was hanging out with this boy. She wanted to be normal. She went to this cabin. They started making out. And then some kind of demons appeared out of nowhere, burned the place down, and killed the boy. What, what was it ever explained why the fire started even? No, it wasn't. Because, like, later on we see that the demons are, like, maybe controlled by the, by the teacher. Oh, spoilers, the teacher, the teacher is evil. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, well, it was kind of explained that the, 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 these visions that she has the, uh, um, by her boyfriend by one of, of the love interest tells her well they, they're not here to hurt you okay okay what has why are they even here then and what <laughs> what the purpose do they have yeah exactly and also they are here to hurt you like she almost burned down hmm. and, and also it's so weird because like we we had this we had this thing where she's always seeking out Daniel like she re- reincarnates and reincarnates and always meets him and they're always together right and we yeah. see the teacher controlling this the demons that burned down the her previous interests house and also and also his life right yeah so what was the point couldn't because i feel like was she controlling the snakes? Were the snakes controlled mm. by the teacher? In that case, if it was the teacher, why did she burn down the house and send her to the school when she could just make out with the boy in the cabin and she wouldn't meet the Daniel for God knows mm. how many years? Yeah. Maybe we should uh, just come out with the fact that uh, uh, all all the kind of main characters that we have talked about, they are, they are angels. Which maybe is explained by it, which we my, maybe I think maybe it's self-explained uh, in in some ways. Like it's very obvious if you watch the film that they're angels. We can maybe we should just come out with that fact now. Yeah, I think. <laughs> but but there isn't really that much that points out to them being a- angels spe- specifically. Like they could. Have just been some other weird being like they could totally have been vampires or yeah, I were- wanted to werewolf- say the same thing. werewolf or something like that. There's nothing specifically angel about them. Yeah, exactly. Like they could have to- like they-, they they could have totally been vampires because we don't learn about the angelic powers. The only like exposition we know that we- that they will be angels is the title. The promotional material, the exposition for the classes, which could not, which would, I mean, it's not really even that relevant because it doesn't really point to them. It's mm. just that, yeah, there's a lot of angel theming going on and they're weird, so they're probably angels. Yeah. Can I ask this? Uh, 
Can I add here, just say, say one, one thing because I'm noticing in one of the pictures you have here is the, the time when uh, she and the bad boy is going to a party because the bad boy is going to explain to her what the heck is going on. And she and throughout this whole film she has been like this quiet uh, girl who doesn't, doesn't seem to say uh, anything and doesn't really act out and then she suddenly comes out in this uh, in the in this dress and she like oh I'm oh I'm driving the motorcycle. Yeah, I mean okay. Okay, okay like girl boss moment and I love that for her. But as you said, she has not been the outgoing uh, biker chick type. And now we suddenly learn that, yeah, she can drive a motorcycle in a dress. And she doesn't like, and, and like, where does this, where does this come from? Like, if it had been at some point where you maybe you would establish her brave side a, a bit or something like that. But throughout this whole film, she has kind of just, she's kind of just been a quiet girl who was a, for some reason gets a lot of attention yeah because as as you said before even when she talks it's almost like she's whispering it's almost like she's gasping for breath hanging into every word you say and she stays that throughout the entire movie like the only the only place where we learn that she is uh, that she's strong willed is in the storyline blurred blurb on IMDb. Otherwise, it's not really shown in the movie. Otherwise than mm. this biker scene. But I liked it. <laughs> of course you did. I mean, she's with the bad boy of the of the love interests. She has mm. a cool, cool, like, she's sneaking out on a rave played by, like, dumb... What was the goddamn band's name? I wanted to include it so badly, but I, but I couldn't, but I didn't remember. Like Sabbath or like Death Machine, something like that. And uh, and then she's like at the party, and the oil of interest is there, and he like a fight breaks out, and she takes the, his motorcycle and she drives away in tears. Yeah, yeah it's that, weird. That, that, that is also one of the scenes where it it yeah it just is them fighting, and then it's cut to her. Oh, she's driving the motorcycle now. Yeah, I guess and... we left that scene. Yeah, and coming back to like the transitions I talked about before, this is where you see that yeah, maybe they didn't have the budget for extra locations. Mm. <laughs> like they couldn't throw another party in the woods like they did before. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, oh. Uh, yeah, they had a party in the woods, but that it it, it wasn't relevant. Yeah, not. Maybe not really now that you mention it. What what happened in that party now? Why when? Uh, Pen like Lucy went with Pen. Uh, Pen met her boy toy, uh, like by saying like, "Oh, you're not like a hipster. You're not trying to be cool." And just like got them destroy her on the spot. Um, and then Lucy had like a like an episode after Molly was like bullying her. Oh okay. But it didn't account to anything because Molly then disappeared from the story. Mm. I I guess we are finally get, getting to a point where uh, so soonly enough the whole mystery is uh, explained to us because uh, if we're going going through the, this this story, or do you want to maybe do do you want to explain because I'm noticing some pictures that. Okay, okay, you explain, Carol. <laughs> yeah, so what ends up happening is that I don't even know how it happened. Like, what was the reason for her remembering her? Okay, yeah, okay, I now I remember. So, basically, what happens is, uh, after the party, uh, Lu uh, like, uh, Luz has, like, doubts about Daniel. So she employs uh, Penn and her boyfriend to dig up information about uh, Daniel. Uh, Penn also has information about every student because she, on her off time, she works uh, in the student lounge because she volunteers because she thinks it's fun. So uh, through like an AI that uh, that uh, her boyfriend developed, 
they looked through the pictures online to see if they can gather more info about Daniel. From that, it turns out that Daniel has lookalikes that's been, that's been living for like thousands of years, hundreds of years before. And they stumble upon a picture where it's basically Daniel and Luz in like 1600s. Yeah, there was a lookalike for her too, I guess. Yeah. So for Luz, it clicks. Like her memories, her visions, the whole shebang. Uh, she's starting to figure it out that these are not just hallucinations. These are visions of her past lives. Because she had a few stints with that uh, throughout her stay at school. Unfortunately, the library begins to burn again. Uh, this time set upon uh, some, some kind of stranger lurking in the shadows. And uh, Penn's Techno Boy Toy dies off screen. Um, we had a funeral scene, and then Luz goes one night after like pondering more stuff and escaping from the hospital ward. Uh, she goes to the roof where she meets Daniel. And she's like, yeah, I know what's happening, so stop being coy. And he's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. And she's like, yeah, I don't believe that. So I'm just going to jump off this balcony and see if you'll catch me or not. Um, and she does. She she jumps. She does this, like, you see a mannequin just... <laughs> oh, w- just... Wouldn't, wouldn't it have been funny if she was wrong? <laughs> It'd be so funny. <laughs> what a weird ending to that film in that case. But can I add, when they shown her falling through the balcony, it's just like, she's so still, it was a mannequin, it was just a mannequin being Yeah, yeah, down. I noticed that too, it, when she uh, she fell, like, it, 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 she, <laughs> they didn't it show her face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she falls on her back, and it's the, it's just a straight line, you can say. Yeah, it was. Like, she, she's. She she does the plank perfectly. <laughs> but it's true. And like in the last moment, Daniel sweeps her off her feet and he rises up into the air and he's an angel. Can, and... can I can I just say that this took way too lo- long to reveal in this film. Like we're we're at kind of like the last ten minutes of the film. Yeah, like twenty fifty really... minutes. Yeah, I don't really want to give Twilight cre- cre- credit, but they were they were much faster with revealing that oh, they were vam- vampires in that film. Like the, the, this film takes forever to <laughs> come to the point where oh, they're angels. Yeah, but I mean, but I'm gonna give Twilight credit because they utilize that to give them a slow burn relationship because there 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 is no relationship. They're just like. I loved you my past life, and I love you again. From the first moment I saw you, I knew I loved you. Yeah, pretty much. And well, uh, that's kind of one of the lines. <laughs> it was, god damn it. <laughs> like, it sounds so cheesy. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. Uh, but anyway, so she's being swept off her feet, he's an angel, and then we have Khan. He, his name was Khan, right? It might have been. No, so, no, no, do you mean... The bad boy. Oh, Ken. Okay, Ken. So, he he's also an angel, and he swoops up on the balcony, he says, Don't kiss him! If you kiss him, you'll die! Kiss him and you'll die! And she's like, I don't care about this. And then they kiss. And then she doesn't die, because she wasn't... She, like, she apparently isn't baptized. And... Uh, no, it, there... there the thing is, she has had a curse on all her previous lives that when she and Daniel meet and fall in, in love, she kind of always dies. And for some reason that seemed to happen when she's 17. <laughs> yeah. but, but because she isn't baptized in this incarnation of her life, she apparently can't come back. Like if she dies this time, it will be for good. Are you serious? Is this is this the reason? Yes. God damn it! Because I was I was thinking like yeah, there was a scene like uh, when she forgot her sweater in the class and she overheat like she isn't baptized. She needs our protection. I was wondering is it is it because she can break the curse? But no, your explanation is much better. 
I, I just like the fact that you didn't know that and you screw, and you have written what she isn't baptized she needs our protection yeah like I didn't understand that it I was so mad <laughs> Well, well I, I, if I'm being honest, after watching it, I, I read a little bit on, uh, I, I led a little bit up on the book, so I'm not really sure where so I, I got to know some of the facts. I welcome any facts, any additional facts you can provide. Yeah, and apparently this kind of thing of what is happening is that... Um, all, all these angels that are in the school are called the fallen angels. And when, and how the film explains is that when the uh, thousands of years when that war happened with uh, uh, Lucifer and uh, God, apparently they took took all the angels took sides, uh, but except for the fallen angels because. Yeah. Uh, I think the film explained that the reason why Edward didn't pick a side was because he because he believed more in love or yeah, I because think that he was, was the reason. in love so he didn't pick a, a side and apparently the whole war nowadays depends on him picking a side because the other fallen angels have picked a side by now the only exception is Edward, and apparently the war has uh, a have the war, it depends uh, apparently a lot on which side Edward is picking on who will win the war in that case. Yeah, and he p can't pick a side when Lucy is near him to distract him. Yeah. Uh, which is when we learn, I mean, I, I prepared this fancy meme because... Uh, but we can go back to be, go back to the story because it turns out Miss Sophia, the teacher, she she is bent on killing Lucy, sh so like Daniel won't have any distractions left. So yeah, ten minutes till the end of the movie, and we learn yeah, like that war stuff is relevant. <laughs> Let's see what have Carol done here. The meet up conciliar sex. I consent. <laughs> I consent. I don't. Because it, it was the now scene on the roof. It was so dumb. Isn't like, there something you you forgot to ask? <laughs> because it's like... As, as, yeah, as, yeah I, under, I understand the meme, Carol. Yeah. Kissing and you'll die. And I don't allow it. Just like, dude, you... Shut up. Like, I love your vibe, but they just want to kiss. Yeah. Let her die if she wants to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so Miss Sophia is the big bad and she's like yeah I'll, I can't let you distract Daniel any longer and then she turns around and kill and kills Penn the best friend of our protagonist mm. because she can um, also the boys had like a angel fight in the in the sky yeah uh, <laughs> that happens it's it's hard to focus on, I gotta say. <laughs> uh, I, one thing that I can say that I actually kind of, kind of liked the designs of the angel wings. They were kind of, they they are they aren't really real wings. They kind of, uh, yeah, I, I I kind of just liked how they looked. Yeah, there were those mystical, shiny, just m m maybe wings. They were in yeah. shape of wings. I know, I liked it too. But, as I said, the fight didn't look good. And uh, what happens is, uh, at the end, uh, Daniel and Lucy, they stand on top of a staircase, and, uh, like, Miss Sophia doesn't want to get up the staircase for some reason. Like, she hesitates. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. <laughs> I have, I have, uh, I have had so many points where I could have ki killed you, but for some reason I don't. <laughs> and then the movie just ends. Like when she vanishes, it just ends. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that, that is also one of the things where the movie has spent all this time, and when the, it's finally getting getting somewhere, it's kind of like, 
Okay, now we're ending. Yeah, we gotta wrap this up. You don't get you. You got mm. too much fun. This isn't supposed to be that interesting. Yeah, but uh, if you think about it, if the teacher's whole purpose in this film was to, was to kill Lucy, she had other opportunities where yeah. she just just could have done it. Yeah, I mean you're absolutely right. She could have like offed her off in so many different ways in so many other different points. But she decides that, yeah, I'm just gonna wait until the last minute and fuck everything up. Mm. I, I know the perfect plan. Let's let's throw a statue at her instead. <laughs> but also, I just wanted to say, as I said in the beginning of the movie, we got introduced to so many characters. And Pen, she lost her purpose, so she died. Bam. Her boyfriend lost his purpose, also died. Bam. Molly, like, they even call Molly's name during when Daniel and Ken fight. And she's not shown on screen. Mm. Uh, the other angels, like, they whisper in the hallways. And they even fly up when the boys fight. But they don't do anything. Uh, like, why? I it's, don't know why. It's so messy. I like the cheese, but I there's there's so many plot threads left hanging, so many characters introduced and left behind. So mm. so 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 little that is actually of meaning in this movie. Uh, let's we we might as well we might as well to say that the, the, this film didn't get any sequels. Surprised. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who could have but, guessed? But, uh, but I guess the story continued with the with the novels, which I guess at some points will give you an explanation on our questions, but not in the film series, at least. Yeah, the movie does, doesn't. I mean, remember when we talked about Twilight, yeah. and I said that I would give the books a try. I don't have that feeling from this movie. I do not yeah, want to no, know not, more about it. Not me. Not me either. La, la, like, the, the, here's the thing, that, that the whole angel mystery is supposed, I guess, to be the, the main point of the film, but it feels such a background thing. Like, as I said, the main com conflict of, uh, of the film kind of starts like 15 minutes before the film's end. It's finally revealed, oh, they're angels. What have we spent all this other time on them? Because it wasn't like we, we, the main character was trying to solve the mystery and what specifically he was. Like, like she sometimes just have these visions of her past lives. And that's kind of it. I even, I'm gonna even go as far to say, I wish we seen more visions of her past life. Yeah. Because as I said, they don't have a relationship. They have yearning and stares. And through the back, like, flashbacks, we could have learned a little bit more about the relationship between the two. Like, what do they love about each other? But we don't. Yeah, actually, when you think about it, we don't know why they love each other. Exactly. Like, yeah, they love each other, but why? What is it that brings them together so much? <laughs> like, I even, even with Twilight, even with Vampire Academy... We had like people had relationships. They liked each other, and not and they spoke to, like they had relationships. But here, it stares and glares, and that's it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, I I gotta be honest. One thing that I haven't really talked about, but but when when I I watched the film. La like I I I had to take breaks so, some sometimes because I was just. Oh, I, I, this is just so boring. Be, because uh, uh, one thing that I haven't really mentioned is that the film is feels like it goes in a very slow pace. And and I think that has to do, a lot to do with the main character and just her quiet nature and her stares and how it feels like she takes a breather every time she talks. Yeah, and I agree. And like... As she, from, from at least the IMDb blurb, 
and her stint with the motorcycle, we know she's capable of like, doing stuff, of being, like, taking charge. And her past lives have also shown that, but she isn't that way now, and it really slowed things down. Mm. What if she, I don't know, just pushed Ken against the wall <laughs> and demanded yeah. answers from him? Yeah, let, let's just get this over with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> do you have uh, some final words to say, Carol? Because we're... I enjoyed the cheese and all the weird, sh weird stuff just happening. Like disappearing characters and mist abound. But I cannot recommend it to anyone. No, this was... That... There's a reason there's no the, sequel. The, 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 there, there just doesn't really happen anything interesting in this film. There's just, there's just some scenes. Yeah. Which are, which are weird, and then the movie goes on. Yeah, and then we have final 15 minutes with a big traumatic battle that ends in 15 minutes. Yeah. It, it was like they, this film had no budget, so they were like, hmm, well, all, the, all the, spe the special effects, we might have to push them as little as we can in the final act, uh, act because we don't really have the budget, so... We're going to have to extend all this boring stuff. But I feel like it's not the actor's fault. Like, because I liked all the performances. I kind of didn't like that Lucy was whispering so much. But I think she was channeling her Kristen Stewart impression. Yeah, I, I, I did the actress performance where uh, I, I think she was very much told on what what the character should be. Yeah. But there were just scenes. Everything was just scenes without consequences. I, I mean... <laughs> anything to add, Fredrik? No, I, th I think we have added all there. All there uh, is. N probably not all there is, but a lot of... A lot of things why which make this film just... Just uh, kind of bad, if we're being honest. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, straight up, this is not a good film. Yeah, it's bad in a sort of a... Like, not like the room. It's just bad. Yeah. Well. Okay, let's see. As always, thank you all for listening, and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Don't forget to follow, hit that bell icon, or follow us on socials like Twitter, YouTube, or Tumblr. And also, big thanks for to Yasar for our intro and outro comedy. See you again in the next episode and have a wonderful day.